Goosebumps, goosebumps, because I rarely get them. My body was from head to toe goosebumpy. I tried to go back to sleep, but I said, it's time to get up. You've got to write down the white owl. You've got to write your show today. You've got to talk about the black woman speaking on forgiveness and how Obama has no forgiveness in his soul, not a scintilla of forgiveness. In fact, if you analyze, if you analyze what's wrong with this man and his presidency, it's exactly what Michael Savage has just diagnosed. The man doesn't have a scintilla of forgiveness in his soul. No, look who he surrounds himself with. One of the most hateful people in the history of America, Al Sharpton. A man who's built his entire, his entire, uh, let us say, edifice on, on hatred and division and, and lies, by the way. Look who he surrounds himself with. Are any of these people capable of forgiveness? Do any of these people espouse any of the values of Christianity which they claim to, uh, a practice? I haven't seen the forgiveness of you. You would think that hundreds of years after slavery, hundreds of years after slavery, after the great society, after affirmative action, after trillions of dollars in welfare, after the first black president, the first black attorney general, and black folks running so much of this government, there would be forgiveness. But there is no forgiveness. There is only enmity. And so I say to you, the only hope for America is forgiveness. Maybe I have to have forgiveness in my heart for this demagogue who is destroying this nation that my grandfather first came to over a 100 years ago, destroying this nation for all immigrants forever. Because let me tell you something. When he gets through with it, the landscape will be pocked with, with craters. It will be pocked with craters that he created with the verbal bombs he has been throwing. Let me tell you what happened to me again. Here's what happened. I went into the restroom in my house where I have a home studio. I was going into the restroom, and I heard flapping going on, banging in the bathroom. I said, oh, God, I hope to God it's not what I think. And a bird had come in the very small window. I have a very tiny window in it. And a bird had come in, and she was banging herself against the glass and the walls and the mirror. There's one wall that's all mirror. The poor thing couldn't get out, and I said, oh, God, what am I going to do? First, I thought of getting a net. I said, that's not going to work. And she was smashing herself in, into the shower stall, against the wall, against the mirror. What I did was, is I opened the window as widely as I could. And like some fictional character in a cartoon, I talked to her. And I said, sweetheart, come here. I said, come here. Go out. Go to your friends. As God is my witness, she flew out of the little window, and her friends chirp, chirp, chirp as she rejoined them outside the house. I'll be right back. Savage. <laughs> History. We are Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea, pioneers who, who braved the unfamiliar, followed by a stampede of farmers and miners and entrepreneurs and hucksters. That's our spirit. That's who we are. We're Sojourner Truth and Fannie Lou Hamer, women who could do as much as any man and then some. And we're Susan B. Anthony who shook the system until the law reflected that truth. That is our character. So he goes into the preacher mode to a largely black crowd. And by the way, the New York Times in this march over the bridge in Selma uh, deleted or airbrushed out uh, the bushes at the uh, celebration. The Stalinist uh, newspaper of record, the New York Times, omitted them from the picture on the bridge. Instead, they showed that street vermin, Al Sharpton. If you can believe we've come to this point in American history, that a president would not only s use such an event to stimulate anger, hatred, jealousy, vengeance, revenge, instead of bringing people together, instead of thanking America for how far we've come, saying that um, things are still no good, taking us into the darkness of the woods from the nation where the nation had already been and had uh, walked out of. We walked out of the darkness of the wood in which he drew us back into. Do you often go to this place in the woods, I asked the woman with the white owl? And she said, yes, we will know each other. And then I saw the black woman in a dream in a black van, a middle-aged woman who was talking to black teens who had come around her truck. She represented the wisdom of, of, uh, of her time. And this woman said America is a deep country. And she said it with respect. And you must find forgiveness in yourselves, she said to the teenagers, to find the deepness of this great nation. And the boys in my dream had bandanas on and they could have gone either way. 
They could have gone on to become gangbangers and troublemakers and cop killers, or they could have taken off their hood outfits and joined our great society and contributed to it. And take a look at what Obama does with that nasty piece of work, Eric Holder. That nasty piece of work, Eric Holder, who has tried to crucify white policemen for not having gotten killed. That's what he's saying to them. Not enough of you have died. See, if more of you had died in interactions with thugs of any race, why then there'd be no charges against you. But that's what we have today, and we all know it. A new low point was reached in the American presidency with his demagoguery. It gives a new meaning to the word demagogue. And we're talking about my attempts at forgiveness because unless we the people learn to forgive this man for his insanities and his divisiveness, he'll, bring, he'll drag us all down into his world, and we can't allow him to take us there. He'll leave the nation with bomb craters in the hearts of all men is what he will do. He is the divider-in-chief, and it's because of one thing. It came to me in the dream. I figured out why Obama is so hateful. It's because he lacks forgiveness, and he seethes in resentment. He is not a practicing Christian. He may think he's a Christian. I don't care what he is, but he's not practicing Christianity, which is why there is a controversy about what his religion is and why he continuously expresses resentment. In the speech marking the 50th anniversary of the Selma March, a major event in the civil rights movement, which ended official segregation in America, and the beginning of bringing the races together in this country, what President Obama did on this occasion was he used it to divide America. His narcissism, his angry personality helped him deliver a speech with the authority of someone deeply familiar with his subject, and yet he lacked the basic context and facts of a man who had more substance than style would have delivered. In the prepared speech written by his sorority, he said, we're the slaves who built the White House in the economy of the South. Now, you can dismiss this as setting the tone for how far African Americans have come in this nation because of the ideas expressed in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. But we know this president and his record of past statements, and we know what he really meant. He was telling the world that this country was built on the backs of slaves and that we owe black people a debt. Now, there are facts about having uh, built the White House, and you know what those facts are, don't you? The manual labor provided by the slaves was horrible, and they were not doing it voluntarily, and they were not being compensated for it, and we're not trying to say that they were. But Obama omits to say that there was an architect, there were engineers, there was management, there was capital investment for the raw materials that also went into building the White House. This is the same lie that leftists have been spewing since Karl Marx claimed that laborers provide all of the value of production. We respect laborers, bricklayers, carpenters, electricians, plumbers for doing good, honest work, without which there would be no construction, no building. But Obama and the leftists talk as if the building would exist without capitalists, whose labor in the past produced the savings needed to invest in the raw materials, to pay the bricklayers and the carpenters, along with architects, engineers, and management, without whom the building also would not exist. You understand that? We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Christmas without you, I'll be so blue, just thinking. Now here's a very sensitive topic, and it's about inbreeding. Let me start from the top on inbreeding. When I was very young, 
and I went to get a marriage license, I had to take a blood test. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a racist society that f forced you to have a blood test in New York State? You know why I had to have a blood test? It was called a Wasserman test. There were blood tests. You were not allowed to marry somebody who was your first cousin. Now, why is it that America, when I was a kid, or young rather, didn't permit first cousins to marry? Can you imagine anything as crazy as that? You can't marry a first cousin? Why would a society prohibit first cousins from marrying? Can you anyone figure that out? Of course you can. Why would New York State prohibit first cousin marriage when I was young? It doesn't anymore, I don't think. Actually, cousin marriage is legal in New York. I just have the list here. Various states have different laws regarding marriages between first cousins. 25 states prohibit marriages between first cousins. Six states allow first cousin marriage under certain very restricted circumstances. Now, why is that? Why would a state prohibit first cousin marriage? Because anyone who took elementary biology, I'm talking high school level biology, knows that inbreeding produces problems. It's a very prob big problem, whether it be amongst stock animals or human beings. Inbreeding produces disease, mental illness, and other problems. Most people know that. Most sane people know that if you marry your sister, meaning if you have incest, you're probably going to produce a defective child. Now, in America, that unto itself is a, a phrase that would offend Hillary Clinton and all of the progressives. There can be no defective children. By definition, there is no such thing as a defective child. To the psychos on the left, everyone is equal. And, of course, we all know they're insane. But I'm talking about inbreeding. I'm talking about inbreeding in any society. Now, inbreeding is well known in amongst the historians in ancient Egypt. If you're a pseudo-historian, please hang up and don't listen to the show. If you're another one of those idiots who went to Harvard or Yale, who scream at full professors even though you never, you never belonged on campus to begin with and you know it. You were ushered in because of reasons other than your brains. And now that you can't keep up, you're screaming at full professors telling them that they're racist for wanting you to keep up with everyone else. That's what's going on. Our universities are melting down like Chernobyl under Barry Obama because he wants to destroy every institution. He wants to flatten everything that's good and great about this nation. Everything is melting down in the country, from the police to the universities to the borders to our language to our culture. But I'll get back to that in a minute. Pseudo-historians don't know what's going on, but I do. The most famous example of inbreeding occurred in ancient Egypt. Several pharaonic dynasties literally collapsed after a few hundred years because they were marrying within the family. In order to keep wealth and power within the family, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs often married their own sister or half-sister. And what happened after a handful of generations is well known. The offspring were mentally and physically unfit to rule. Now the same is true about the royal houses of Europe. Take a look at Prince Charles. He's an example of inbreeding. Look at him. Look at his ears. Listen to him talk about global warming while his nation has been overrun by Muslims. This moron, all he knows how to do is put on a tie and paint bad watercolors. This idiot. The royal houses of Europe have royal families that for centuries married among each other. Because tradition did not allow them to marry people of non-royal class. Today, thank God... The mental retardation is diminished in the royal families because they can now marry for love, not just for status. Why am I talking about it now? Because you may not know this, that massive inbreeding within the Muslim culture has been going on for a very long time. In fact, for the last 1,400 years, primarily in the third world. And what are the consequences of intermarriage between first cousins? Well, intelligence, sanity, health etc., uh, are affected. Inbreeding. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? If you can't figure it out, then don't even listen to the rest of the conversation. Studies show that children of what we call consanguinous marriages, consanguinous marriages, that's identical blood or close blood, have lower intelligence, lower IQ, than children of non-related parents. We used to know about hybrid vigor. You know what hybrid vigor is? It's marrying out of your uh, close family associates. In other words, you don't marry a cousin, you marry a stranger. That's called hybrid vigor. 
That's why in America, people are so 